amazing day at fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. Welcome, everybody. We're good to have you. We're here to talk about the wonderful FileMaker platform. I am here with Nick uh, Hunter and Ken Tooley. Uh, we are currently working our way through a series about basically doing existing FileMaker file design modernization workshop, which is really cool. Uh, Nick takes a file live on stream and then alters it live on stream for all sorts of shenaniganry that entails. So, uh, Thursday, we're going to be doing Postman and APIs in FileMaker. Friday will be on-site considerations for successful FileMaker deployments. And we'll be continuing the series next week. And there will be another Leland day on Thursday as well. So, uh, with that being said, we've got the bundle. If you'd like to continue to support the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. We have our fmtraining.tv uh, annual bundles. There's three options. Pick which one is best for you. Uh, all of them are really highly edited, concise videos on FileMaker topics. We get a lot of people going like, man, your guys' live streams ramble on forever, which is true. But also, it's a live discussion. It's a live lecture. Um, it's not like a highly edited video that's concise and covers very specific points and very specific points of time. There's a live audience. We take live questions. Um, so this is meant to be more of a community thing that happens to also be building a great resource of videos for you to go back and look through. Uh, but it's not going to be as highly edited or as trimmed down as our training videos. So if you're looking for very like beginner's guide to FileMaker stuff about a variety of FileMaker topics, including server, I know it's always like a big one for people. Feel free to pick this up. If you've already picked it up, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. And so without further ado, Nick, what are we doing today? Hello, Marge. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you, Ken, for being there. Thank you, everybody, for being there, too. So what we do today, we try to do better than yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OK, so <laughs> now, OK, let me explain what. OK, so it, it sometimes it's good to see uh, somebody is struggling, right? Uh, because you feel better, <laughs> so you feel like okay. See if uh, if uh, if Nick if can be in trouble sometime. That means uh, it's a good it's a good thing, right? Okay. Yes, of course. Sometimes I want to you know, uh, you know, take take this and you know, uh, throw it by the window. And uh, so yeah, it, you know, we I want that. I want to do that sometime. So yeah, yesterday what happened is. You know, I'm I'm discovering the thing. I'm not preparing before uh, to be the more natural as possible, and I it was interesting to see that I was you know uh, uh, discovering and testing things and stuff like that. So, but uh, in one hour yesterday, what I've done is too much in one hour. Okay, uh, it was too much. Okay, and too fast. Okay, so we are going to back a little bit, back off. And we are going to explain what's going on and explain the problem. And actually, uh, when this morning when I woke up, I discovered what was wrong. I was saying, okay, you know, my God, it's it's so obvious why it's not working. But you know, sometimes when you uh, when you talk and you know. Uh, you don't see things, right? As you, you know, you need to concentrate and stuff. So after a, a, a night of sleep, and it's it's 11 p.m. my time, so you know I have <laughs> I have a long day before me, right? So um, this morning I, you know, I finally discover why it wasn't working, and that's I was so happy because that will give me an opportunity uh, to show you how we fix that, okay? And it's, uh, and it's a really good fix and extremely simple. It's all about logic. And I'm going to I explain that, right? So I'm going to share the screen. We are going to be back on this. So let's explain from the beginning. Ken had before, uh, where is the, where is the, the balloon verification, right? No, uh, the pilot the verification. Pilot verification. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ken had before container fields, right? With file inside the container. So we had here, we had all the containers. I can show you this here. We had all the container. Okay. One, two, three. So, no. Where, yeah, it's on no. the documents, pilot uh, documents. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. So we had uh, all all the container. All of those were containers where Kent were putting the files. So when you have one record and how many containers we have? One, three, six, eight. And eight containers, right? So eight containers, one record. And on each container, you have a file. So when you have this, it's easy to check if the file is inside the container or not, because the container is dedicated. This container is for the certificate, certificate picture back. This is for the certificate picture front. This is for the flat review. This is for the insurance. This is for the medical. And this is for the signature. So we had a dedicated container. This is, uh, it's, a, it's good if you don't have a lot of records, okay? If you have a, a few records, this is okay, okay? But when you have a file a little bit more advanced, a little bit bigger, right? And when you have containers dedicated for many things, because here we have for pilots, right? And then we have also for balloon, uh, where's the balloon? Uh, Two more. Hello. There you yeah. go. Okay. So here we have for the balloon, we have all the containers. So you see, we have a lot of container fields. Okay. All scattered on many, uh, on many, what's the name? Tables. So this yeah, I think is there's not... about 15 containers throughout yeah, the 15... system. Exactly. So this is not really cool because, first of all, the container is dedicated. Right, and then we don't have a, a place where we can see and collect all the information of the containers, uh, and we miss some some goodness, right? We, we miss some goodness. For example, uh, we miss that uh, the weight of containers of one pilot, for example. You know how many? Uh, you know, for one pilot, how many? documents, right? And um, the weight on the size of the file you have inside the containers. Um, and of course, uh, we don't have this duplication system that I show you, you know, during a, a, or another webinar where we were looking for the duplicates and stuff like that. This is not possible when you have many, many things like this, right? I mean, it's more complicated to do that, right? So yeah, because I have like I, three fields um, that go with each container exactly. to track things like you just talked about. Exactly. So you have multiplied you, times fifteen. Yeah. A, a, exactly. So you 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 increase the size, the complexity, and if you have external storage, it, it start to be a little bit cumbersome to detect all of this, right? And uh, it's not it's not a good practice to do that, okay? Better way is to what we built so far uh, and to have one table for all documents, right? With all the fields we need, only one field, right? I have one container here, right? Uh, where's the file container here? Here at the bottom, one, yeah. One, yeah. One container, right? That's it. And then I have another one for the thumbnail, but the main container is only one. And that container will be for all the documents, for all the related uh, entities that will that will go there and insert the document inside that container, right? So I have I will at one point I will have one table, right? And here we know, for example, here when we when you go to the tables, right, you will see the documents and you know how many documents you have in your database, right? You avoid right. the duplication. You avoid the duplication to avoid uh, tracking where are the documents and stuff like that. So, and if you want to export, it's easier because you reuse and abuse of the same script, of the same design, of the same presentation, of the same fields, right? And that's why you know when I did the demo, uh, I could copy paste the entire this entire presentation, 
I copy paste from one field, one one file to another, one filemaker file to another because it was the same. It was pointing to one or using one scripts to add a file to delete the file. So all of this is easier because you have only one unique container. Okay, and the presentation is better instead of having those fields, you know, in the layout like this, you know, and you have the information for each one, like this, right? So you have the name, you, you, you can track, you can see what happened, right? So now it is, it is way better to be presented that way. Yeah, there was an issue in my in my original system. I had to yes. add a document, so mm -hmm. I had to go duplicate all those fields and figure out where to squeeze it into the layout. Exactly. I yeah. don't have to do that with your layout. Exactly. So you can and tomorrow. So what? So the the benefit the benefits are huge. You know, it's uh, it's uh, the the server will handle that easier easier, right? Uh, like when you have a you know when you want to back up your your documents, you know, the server has only one unique uh, extender storage container. So it's uh, all, all about one folder inside your, uh, you know, inside your, uh, your, your uh, server. And, yeah. and now that we have the, the, the type attached to it, you can have a extended storage, you know, the extended storage on the server, and you can have a hierarchy, you know, a folder, so you can have, uh, you know, the pilots, and you have all the, all the certificates, you know, you have all the type, for example, you know, you have all the type of documents, you know, the all extended storage, like it works. So we, we can do a demonstration one day on this, if you want, but, but there, you have many advantages, and the, the best and the biggest advantage we can I can see right now is this, you know, if I want to add a new type, right? If I want to add a new type, you know, like I don't know, or give me a type, I don't know, or headshot. Sticking headshot. with the pilots, headshot. Okay, headshot. Okay. So I have a new type, right? Headshot. Okay. So I drive my document inside this, right? It will do it. Just the zoom makes everything smaller, faster, slower. So I've dragged my document inside the inside the, do, the the container, right? Yeah. Okay, it's there, right? And then I say, okay, it's a net shot. Boom, that's it. done. And headshot Done. just showed up in the value list because we added it. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Right? Yeah, that's great. You, you understand? So, if you want to do that, if you want to add a type in that design, okay, you need to add a, a field, uh, you know, or add, you know, all and attached everything to be. So you so you so you you got the point. Here yeah, that it's yeah I definitely extreme. see it. Okay, and you understand why this is heavily portable and reusable because okay you change the value list and boom you know you you copy paste everything and you do the the two free relationship i need for that you change the value list and up you have a new a completely new document system right so it's a, so that's the advantage right the, the big advantage is this is the reuse, reusability portability usability visibility but okay we have all the package here right so we we got everything we we need. Okay. The problem here now, everything okay. It's simple to build this. So I'm, I'm not going to go back how to build this because I've done it. Okay. The problem we have now. Okay. And I want to make sure that everybody understand what we want to do. Okay. We want to attach. Right. We want to attach to a status, a type of document. That means I want to know that if for that pilot, in all the documents I have attached to that pilot, I want to know if I have a, a certain type 
of a given type of document. For example, here I want to know to validate this for to get the certificate validation, I need to have the certificate back and the certificate front. At one point, uh, you will send me a, 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 a you know a sample file for the certificate. Maybe you, it will talk more about that. Okay, I can I do that. No, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, oh, next week. Yeah, for so, next week. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have the certificate front, the certificate back, and if I have both, if I have both, and only at that. Uh, condition, I will get the certificate status to say valid. If one is missing, right? If one is missing, if one is missing, I want the this to say missing block, like he's doing yeah. right now. So because one is missing, if I put it back, okay. I want the certificate to tell me that it's valid. Okay? Right. Right. So, okay. So how we get there? Is it possible to restrict the container to a certain type of image? Yeah, uh, of course you can. I can, uh, David, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, no, no, I'm not on the Coliseum. <laughs> David, it's in Greece. Coliseum is Roma. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, D David, I'm I'm going to answer the question later. Okay, uh, uh, David Danger asked, is it possible to constrain uh, the documents uh, to uh, you know to only JPEGs and to avoid you know the people you know if they want to insert I don't know or GIF or Docs or XLS or whatever you can, you can say no, right? Uh, you can drop. Yeah, it's possible to do that. I, I will, I will answer that later. So now we have this problem. We, I want to tie. I want the certificate status to tell me, uh, to tell me it's to say valid, if the condition of having a certificate back and certificate front together, only if I have both what right right okay so in the same time okay uh okay let, let, let's talk about this to do so okay to do so i need to attach to each document here i want to attach a type okay but when we do this when we do this type of things, we don't rely on the symbol on the single value list, what I call dead value list. You know, we have a certificate front, uh, certificate back. You know, we we don't want that, right? To have a static, static, or dead value because this is. Dead. It's uh, no. It's hard coded. It's uh, it's it's not it's not what we want. We want to have a value list based on records, right? So that's why we have a here. We build a table with two fields, right? Pretty much. I have an ID, and I have the value. What what it is. You know, the value, you know, like like value list. The value. I have a value and I have an ID. Thanks to this table, right? I can get out of this, right? I can get a list. I can I can build a value list out of this. Okay. Demonstration. I'm going to value list, new, right? I'm going there, use from field. I click here, I go to my table, I select the value, and this is, uh, I don't know, a pilot, I don't know, whatever, okay. So now I have a value, I have a value list, okay. 
So I have a value list I can use on every, you know, I can go there and put that here and I have a value. So I go there, pop up menu, I'm selecting five months. The value list I just created and now I have a value list, right? Right. Out of this. Advantage is, uh, you know, if I change the name on this, automatically it's there. Right, I I got the change. I don't need to go open value list. You know, I change here directly in the in the record, right? So this and is that would change, yeah. yeah. And that ahead. would change the existing values, um, where that is that item has been selected no. in other places. No, that won't change the value already existing. Okay, uh, that that would be valid for the new ones. I mean. You will get. You will be able to add a new record with this new value, but it won't break. That's the point. Okay. It won't break anything because I don't care. It's, it's the, the the ID is still the same. I can put whatever I want here. The ID will still the same, so it won't break anything, right? So as long as I'm looking for the um the ID, I'll get the right value. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so this is how we build a value, a, li a value list based on uh, records on, from a field, right? But, but this is basic FileMaker, right? So you, you know that after two months of FileMaker, you know that, right? So I'm going to answer that too. So the question is, yeah, I'm going to answer the question later. Uh, so when I have this now, when I have this, right, I can easily attach to a document, I can attach an, an, a type. Th those are document types, okay? Document types. So thanks to this, right, right, and thanks to a value list, right, I can go there and say, you know, this is a flat review, for example, right? If I want. So I can do that, right? So I can select from a, from a value list, right? Put in that field, whatever from the, the value from the value list. And instantly, instantly, in my document table, right? My document table, so let, uh, here. So this one, if I go to this one, okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. So this document here, right? I have a, I have a type. Uh, is it is it this one? Hold on. I need to go and grab that pilot. Make sure that you know. Where is the pilot's ID here? So let me just look for this pilot. Okay. So now I am in the pilot. So that, this document, it's a headshot, you know, it's a headshot here, right? So what happened if in this table, so let's put this together. Okay. So what happened if I put here the value list, you know, Document type. I could have renamed it document type. If I do this and I change this to flat review, boom, it changed. It changed the ID, certificate front. It changed the ID, right? Change the ID. Why? It's because I have in that table, okay, I have two fields. I have document type where I have, I have the value list attached and I have a document type ID, right? That comes from that table. That means, and I have a lookup here. I have a lookup. Want to change this? Here I have a lookup that says, from the T12 documents to the T12B, right? Get me the value list. Item, you know, I give give me the the ID. You know, when when I put a name here that matches 
a record in that table here, right? When I put a name that match, automatically the lookup will put here the ID that match that name. You know, if I put Got it. here, okay. So that is basic. So far, I don't, you know, I, I, normally everybody in the audience should know that, right? So if I change this headshot, it's 22, 222. The hedge is 222. See, this is this match, you know. If I change to certificate back, it's D2590. D2590. Uh, I have this. Right? It's, it's good. So, because I have a relationship that says when you put a name, the name, matching name here with this, get here. The ID. Okay. So now that I have this, I can, so now that I have that now that I have this construction, I can go there, right, and do the same, you know, because this record here is the same as this one, okay? So I can, if I, and I can show you if I change the name here. So if I change to medical, for example, that changed to medical, right? So it changes on the other side too, right? So it, why? So I'm going to explain why, okay? It's because I'm modifying a field in the document table, okay? I'm modifying a field in that table. I am in that table, document. Here, this field appears in that occurrence. This field is related to that occurrence that points to the document table, right? Right? So I'm modifying a field in this occurrence inside the document table. But on the other side here, I have a world, I have a Anchor buoy that says, okay, this is the main anchor. This is the anchor of the anchor buoy that points to documents and have a relationship to that table, to the you know, to the value list table, right? I have I have their you know I have their the relationship means and the relationship says, when I put a document type, right? It, when I put something in that field, matches, uh, the data matches value I have here, right? Right? So then grab the ID. So in the document table, the, the relationship I use to grab, to look up, I'm starting from the 12 document table. I'm starting from there and I'm going to there and I want the ID of the, the, the ID value list item. I want this. Okay. So that's why we have this in the lookup. That's why we have this. Okay. Because like I said yesterday, but I'm going to repeat myself again. This here points to documents. Here it points to documents. And all those points to documents. This one also points to documents, right? And this one too points to documents. So when I go there and I say start from, it shows me all the occurrence attached to the document table, to this table here, right? The, the, the table documents, it shows me from where I'm starting, right? So I can, I can choose to start from anywhere I want in that map, right? So, and I decide to start from here because starting from here, I have a relationship to the value list item that will allow me 
based on the matching value, the matching document type, right? And to um, to whatever. Or, yeah, I was looking for the, for the question. The so, type there. Yeah. yeah. So that 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 is this is where I need to start if I want to get that the values, the record from that relationship. Okay. So I need to start here. If I start here, I will never get there. Demonstration. If I start from another one, starting from there. Okay, I have all of them, but I don't have the T12. I have none. I have none of the T12, right? So I need to start from the T12 to go there, and then I can get this, okay? Got so, it. yeah, so we have some questions here, so I can bring them to, this, to the layout, to the... Yeah, we've got a couple. Yeah, we can go there. I'm going to... Okay. okay. So, Let's start with David Angel's top yes. one, which is possible to restrict a container to certain types of images, like only JFP GIFs. Yeah, it's possible. I'm, that, that's something I want to demonstrate at the end because it's uh, I need to build something, so it's not something I, uh, I can just talk. So, yeah, is, is the other one? Uh, YUUID instead of sequential numbers for the value list table. Okay, yes, because it's not, it's not comfortable. Um, the UUID is rock solid. It's something that is long enough to avoid confusion, right? And uh, we can rely on extremely well, okay? And we sure, we sure that you have no other record in the, any other table that can have the same number, right? Because you can have the a number, I don't know, 1,234 in one table and 1,234 in another table and 1,234, you know, it depends. You can, you can have the same, you can have the same uh, sale number on many tables. Also, uh, something that I don't really like, when you use FileMaker, Pretty way, okay. This is what we want to avoid. Okay. If I have a, you know, like this pattern count, right? And I said, okay, uh, I have a list of, you know, I, I have a, was a list of IDs, like uh, one, two, three, four, and. Uh, four, three, four, six, and, uh, you know, and I can do just for fun, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like this, like, okay, something like this. And I search for 32. Okay, he found it. I have 32, right? If I search for uh, 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 three, two, uh, four. Uh, he, he won't find it, but uh, one, no, two, three, four, no, two, three, four. He found it, right? But it's not what I want. Uh, w w the one, two, three, four is not two, three, four, right? You understand? So th this is okay. This is one, the, one of the reason, one of the reason we don't. We uh, don't like it pretty much. Um, it's because we don't we cannot rely on things like this. Search, for example, is not you know, and it, it can confuse also the go to red records. Uh, you know, go to red records. You can confuse um, a file maker with this, right? Instead of having, uh, you know, instead of having this construction right here so let's do this so if you have a construction like this right you have uh you sure to have uuids like this right and uh 
Okay. Uh, here, missing this. So, if I have a, if I have like this, right, and I look for in the patent count, I look for this, right. I have no way of being wrong. You know, what I mean, it's impossible to get something similar. You know, it, you know what? It's it's all impossible to know. But out of two. 20 billion or 200 billion, I don't know, uh, where you can have something like this, for example. Okay. I don't, I'm making up, right? So now he said two. But this case is really, really, really impossible to get, right? You, you understand? So so that's why we use this, um, is to make sure that this is unique. We, 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 we get it. Um, there's no, no way of her. I, I like the subs the uh, you know the sale numbers you know uh, so David Jensen was talking about this you know uh, no uh, he was talking about this the sale number. I like it you know to get a number of invoice or number of uh, whatever document you need or you know of estimate and stuff like that this is great this is what you need right this is what you need to do uh, but but uh, it's years now we don't use that as a say as a key you know as an id you know it's you know we have the, the ids by better flat right so it's so, right so serial a good data solution but not a good key solution yeah exactly yeah it's for you know you want to have a yeah. numbering of invoice for example you know yeah. that's good you know that good that's a good way and the other question was um in general what is the best practice for using auto enter calculations or auto enter lookups Okay, so I have the lookup when the so I, I use the auto entry calculation for only one thing, right? Uh, that the lookup cannot do. So what's the difference? Uh, the lookup is for 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 this case scenario where I have here, I'm putting a name here and I want to change this and then change the ID. Uh, lookup is great for that. No, the lookup is great for that. Uh, by the way, the auto entry calculation I'm not. Here. We work for that. Um, so, um, but this is not, this is enough. When you want, when you hear, right, and you want to relook up a value, right, you want to look up a value, this is the best way, you know, this is the best way. And of course, okay, the, the big advantage, right, is that uh, it's uh, it's it's very um, you don't have problem on the context, you know, because sometimes you update data from a table, and then the auto entry calculation won't work because you're not in the right table. This this here it doesn't care from where it starts, you know, it, it doesn't give a damn on this. Um, you understand because you're not you you on the right uh, you on the you you are always on the right context because you, you say you say you want to start you start that context you start there right and from anywhere you are in the solution if you if you change the this you know this value here. It will change for sure. It will update, right? So this is the advantage. The you know, you pretty much are you free to go, you know, or anywhere. But I I I can do a, a, a great session. I, we have a, a mod. We have many webinars on on this relationship. No, I think so. We have uh, we made so much so many. Uh, no, yeah, you've done a lot on auto, um, auto yeah. enter calcs, yeah, and with reference to the lookups. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, I have seen people who say that auto entry is faster than we look up both. No, mm, uh, I have no idea. I have no idea at that point. But it depends on how you use it. If you do a replace on the fan set and stuff like that, it might be. Um, that also the reason I sometimes use it. 
the real reason why I'm using auto entry is to do something that um, ReLookup cannot do. And I'm doing here, right? Is to grab a list of IDs, not only one, right? Not only one ID, one value. I'm can, here I can say, I want a list of the ID. If I if I use a lookup for this, we we can we can do that. You know, uh, do a lookup for this. You know, you know I can do it. You know, so we, which was the uh, the TO five A? So if I'm going there, I'm doing lookup. I'm in pilot, and I'm saying okay TO five A. And I want the type, right? So what is the two five A? What is doing? Is doing all oh, the ID from the pilot document. Okay, yeah. So, so here how how it works. If I go to the pilot, do we have a pilot table somewhere? Um, I can. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I, I can think... go. Yeah. Yeah. Pilot. Pilot verification would probably work for you. Pilot verification. Okay. Yeah. So if I go there, right? But I, the, the, I, I think the best is to build a new a new layer. Let's be, let's build a new layer. Okay. Just for the demonstration. So I'm putting the ID of the pilot, right? Right. And the ID of this, right? And mine. Right. right. <clears throat> so let's blank this. Now I'm I'm going to do a lookup, a relookup on this, right? We look up on this field. So this will be updated. It will Right, the ID. So I have one ID here, right? And here, the first one, right? Yeah, the fr okay. But I'm going to explain which one. It's interesting. That's a good question. So, okay, here I have only one ID. Here I have all of them. I have all the IDs of the documents related to that guy here i have only one the first the first of the list that means and the lookup you will never get this you will get the first in the list but which one which first I, yeah which first you know so if i do tz05 a, this is my list. So with the auto entry calculation, I can say I want the list. But with the, with the relookup, I'm saying this. I don't have the list. I have the first one. I have the first one on my list. But how FileMaker decides that this one, the OD7 is, is the ODF is the first. Why? Why file choose this? How? Based on the sort order. For example, here, this is the this is the where I'm pulling this information. I have no sort order. So it shows you the order of creation. The first will be the first created, right? Okay. It will be the first created. So now I want to do, I want to reverse that, for example. You know, I want to change 
which one is the first, okay? Let's say I want to sort this by five times. So I change the sort order, right? And you will see this, this line here, right? You see this line? This line will change. Why? Because I changed the sort order in the relationship and it didn't change. Why? Uh, yeah, it changed, no? Yeah, it changed. Did yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, it changed. From an O to a D, it, was, it kind of looks the it same. Was, it was, it was, yeah, it was OF, but now it's, uh, it's so it changed. So let's, let's change it again. Let's change it again. So D, it starts with D6, two, D25, right? So let's change it again and reverse this, for example. Reverse. So look this. For 2BF, it changed because the order now is different. So if you want to change that, and if you want the, if you want the, the relookup will always, in that scenario, when you have, when you have one pilot, many documents, it will pull always the first, okay? The first created, right? So if you want to have the latest created, right? You need to have a, a timestamp on creation and sort reverse sorts, you know, sort uh, uh, um, descending, right? Sort the relationship, and then you will get the last crate, not the first crate, right? This is how you do the the by by default by default filemaker will always get you the first created record in the list if you don't do any sort, okay? So that's why I'm using the auto entry. Most of the time is to get how many are, to get all the list of the, of the ID, not only one, okay? Well, that was a good question. So I think- Yeah, so basically it, it seems like that the sort order much more important when you're doing a lookup because you're only going to get one versus doing the the list and the auto count because you're going to get them all whether you yeah and the order probably doesn't mean any, anything oh in my case i don't care the order but if you yeah. want for example if you want to know for example you want to get the latest if you want to get the latest uh in then you your... need to definitely yeah you need to have her on, you know, you need to go there, add her creation, you know, uh, and use the, you know, use timestamp because you need the timestamp, right? Because you can create multiple on the same day. Right. So right. the timestamp, yeah. because, you know, creation time. Okay. Right. And then you can sort, sort on that it. descending, and then you have the latest on top of the list. Right? Yep. Okay. So, but the auto entry calculation, I'm using that for when you need the list, relookup, you will never get the list. Never, ever. Okay. I understand. Yeah. And the lookup has another advantage that, you know, uh, it's that, you know, you know, I want to show you that is that you have the ability to. If I blank this, goes away, right? Do it again. Oh, right. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. If I blank, goes away. I mean, if I put something wrong, let's do something different. Let's put this, let's put a drop down. If I put this, I have the ID. If I put this, I don't have it, right? Right. If I blank it, I won't have it. So this is the lookup. So how you do this? Because by default, that's what we showed yesterday, 
by default, the lookup is like this. If not, if no exact match, then what to do? Do not copy. Co copy next lower value. Copy next higher value. Or use blah. Or use blank. So by default, Pharmaca do this. Another thing. So it's take my time and explain everything, right? It's uh, yesterday I did too much, too much. So if I do this, okay, cool. I have the ID. But if I come here and I said this, okay, I still yeah. have the ID. Yeah, but it's not. It's not right now. I, it's not right. If I blank it, I still have the ID. Yeah. You know, if if I put anything here, I put this, I still have the ID. If we change the ID only if I'm selecting something that exists. But now that I have something here, it will never blank it, even, the, even though it's wrong. So that could be a problem because you can, you can, you know, it's not right. So that's why on the lookup, you say, okay, lookup. You said use blank, and of course you don't. You remove this. Don't copy content if empty because you want that to happen, even if it's empty. Demonstration. If I don't uncheck this, yeah, but it will never be empty. But it's okay. Uh, if I don't check this, if I do this, it doesn't blank it, right? So you need to do. You need to have this. Don't copy content if empty, right? You need to you need to uncheck this, right? Because what it what it means here, what it means here, don't copy content if empty. If it doesn't match, pretty much, it will be empty. So don't copy, it won't copy, right? So Now that I have this, I can I can put whatever I want here blank. If I put something right, I have it. If I put something wrong, I don't have it. So don't forget if you want that behavior, it's not the default behavior. You need to do it yourself. Uncheck this and use blank. Or you can see. No, no. We, we, what? Is it? Yeah, wrong. Yeah. If you right, uh, you can put whatever you want. I like blank. I like to blank it. I say okay, blank it. You know, if I said this wrong, right? If I said this, wrong, if I do this not wrong, right? So whatever you want, whatever fits you. Okay. But now you know about this. Like the blank. So if we, we don't have any question about this. No. So, okay. So now that I have this, now that I have a value, I have the IDs, I have my documents uh, with the IDs, you know, are, so I have everything in, in order pretty much, right? Here, right, in the documents, right? I can now detect, I can get the list of my document type. That means if I go there, right, I have all of those are the list of the document type I have in that uh, table, okay? I have all, all, I have all of those in the table. All of those document type. This one is unknown. That's why it's not there. There you go. See this one. This one unknown. That's why I have five. I have five documents, but I have only four IDs. If I put something here, right, it will come over there. Boom. Okay, so it just came. Right. Yep. So I. So how now? I can get 
So, uh, you know, I want to I want to finish this value list stuff. Ken told me yesterday that he wanted it wanted he wanted the the list here to get empty, right? To 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 not show anymore in the list what he selected. So the certificate front is selected. I don't have it here anymore. This one is selected, the certificate back, I don't have it here anymore. This is there, I don't have it anymore, right? So if I go to that guy, right? Now I have no, they're all unknown, all of them, they're all unknown. If I click here, my list is full, right? But right. if I said this one is a certificate back, right? And I go, there I go there, I go to this this record here. Bam, the certificate back is no longer available to me because I have it. In that and list. we don't and we don't want duplicates. That's why we're and, doing and this exactly exactly. You don't want to you don't want to let the people to do the mistake of adding twice the same type. Right. So if I put front, right now it will say. Uh, certificate is oh it's not valid but doesn't say missing doc right? so um so now if i'm going there i click here i don't have certificate back i don't have certificate front so how we do this okay and it's a very simple manner i have my id so david uh, you asked for the id i'm going to show you why this is a good demonstration i want to filter a, a, a list, a value list. We have only one way to do this, to filter a value list. To filter value list, we need a relationship, okay? We need a relationship to filter a value list. So what we do, okay? What, so when you have a problem like this, you need to, Put on the table what you want to do, right? So I know some people, they write it. I put that on my, uh, I write it on my head. What do I want to do? <laughs> I want each time that I'm adding an ID of a type, of a document type on that list, I want, to, I want the value list to ignore it. Okay? I want the value list to say, don't show me. Okay, so FileMaker has one way to do this. So what do we do? In that here, I mean, this is a palette table. So it's here in the main, you know, in the palette table, right? I create a field, a link. Everything I call link is because I'm going to use that. It's a link. I call that link. I like, I like it. It's my way. It's my webinar. I do what I want. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, I like it. I like my link. Do whatever you it's want. Descriptive. It works. It's descriptive. It tells you what's exactly, going to happen. With exactly. It. So, I have a, I have a, I have a, a field where I'm collecting all the ID of the document type I will have in related in my list here. Each time I'm adding one, each time I'm removing one, each time I'm changing one, this list gets updated. And how? Thanks to my friend, the list. Remember, I'm I'm the 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 the, the function I use the most in FileMaker is list. What the list do? So what the list do? I go there list. I go where my document leaves leave and i want the list of all my document type this is the list of my document type i have currently in that table right currently those rec those record here those five records they're here one two three four five five records five ids right right okay. so so the list doing that to me so I have this 
fantastic fields, right? Link. So I'm going to remove this. It, it doesn't move. List. So it's a link. It's a document document type IDs with a S because I am getting all the ID. So here we use my trig my auto entry trigger technique, right? I have a field that I use for a trigger. We have a webinar on this. I'm going to explain that in more, uh, uh, more. But I have a field, right, that I'm going to use to trigger the, the, the calculation. Each time this gets changed, this will happen. So I have in my let, I'm, I'm, I'm stating that the list of value, I could, I could say, uh, you know, list of document types. I could have said that, but right? if you want, if you want to be more, you know. Descriptive. Descriptive. List of document types equal the list of the TO file a of my document is this, you know, the, the just what I just demonstration in the in in the in the in the data view, right? And then I'm saying, okay, yeah, but that's in the condition. If it's empty, that means if there's nothing here, if I have no no types detected, I want in that field to get no. That's what I want, right? And then I want the word null. That's what I want to get there. Otherwise, if it's not empty, put whatever you find, right? So far, so good. If this is empty, if that's nothing here, put no. Otherwise, put whatever you have found here, okay? So that's why, uh, uh, that's why we do, that's why we do in the let, because I'm calculating this once, right? I'm calculating this once, and then I'm using twice, but it's calculated one. If I do this, it will do it two times. Palmaker will do it two times. One time here to detect, and then one time here to put it, right? So that's why the let statement is good, because I'm saying, okay, calculate this, and then yeah. can we use Sometimes in my calculation, we don't care. It's calculated. Use it as much as you want. You can abuse it, right? Yeah. So now, yeah. So now, what happened here? How I'm getting that list triggered, right? Each time that I make a change, right? Like here, for example. See here? Okay. Let's say I'm changing this, right? I change, nothing happened so far. I commit, and now this will change. Bam, it changed the first one. Because on commit, on commit, I am modifying that. Uh, let's remove this. I'm modifying this, right? Right. We did that so way at, back in an early day of all this. Yeah, early day. Yeah. So hmm. if I change this again, look this. If I change this to medical, so also good. Nothing. If I commit here, change. Bam, and it changed this at the same time. Okay, modifying this field, I trigger this. Okay, so I so the advantage is so the advantage of the trigger is that imagine that I have so many calculation here related on this. I have all the number of number of balloon. I'm calculating this with a trigger, number of documents. I'm calculating this with a trigger. 
So each time you trigger this, right, you have all plenty of auto entry calculation that happen. Right. You so in your scripts, you only have one role. You have you only want this. on commit. You only have this. That's it. And you have all the auto entry calculation that get triggered, right? So now, j just you know, we 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 arrive at the, at the end. Now that I have that list, I have that list of documents IDs. I have a relationship that points to that points to that table. Okay. And then I say, here, I say, from that field, that field, ignore, you know, show me only the one that are not there. Right? Right. That's what he's doing. He said, okay, I have all of those. Okay, uh, I'm going to ignore that because you have them and I'm going to show you only the one I don't have. Right? So, right. so it's very simple. So now that we have this relationship, very simple relationship, you know, I have one field, one, you know, with a list of IDs and then I have this table with the matching IDs, and then it's going to it's going to say, okay, 42 BF, ignore. Uh, D2, ignore. 3A, ignore. 222, ignore. And uh, D25, uh, I don't have it. Oh, yeah, okay, show it. So, oh, this one now. D25, uh, ignore. Free AA ignore two 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 ignore, and D twenty five D twenty five. Don't have the D twenty five. We have a duplicate there. Looks like. Yeah, it's okay. But anyway, you understand what I mean? Yeah, we have two so documents going, with the same. Yeah. So is is ignoring, is ignoring, the you know the the whatever, will ignore. The, it is here, the D20. Yeah, we have two duplicates here. Yeah. yeah. So you understand. The, the, so it, it will ignore the list. So to make this happen, that means the list, how a value list will work on this. Okay. Remember, I have the, I have the relationship that do this, right? So the relationship that I'm using here, I'm going to show, is going to do this list of the... Uh, how how I name this? Um, what the Which name one? of this? Uh, let me see. Uh, T O five T. Okay. Okay. So what the T O five T will do? We'll do this. T O five T value. Okay. So that what it, that what available to you based on that relationship, okay? So far so good. That what available, that that's available to me based on this relationship, right? What happened if they've not been used? Yeah. What happened if I say, I'm remove those, I'm remove this one and this one and this one. What? Pretty much, I'm doing this, and I remove. And then I'm doing the same. I'm going to say list of the T O five T value. Oh, now I have all of those because I removed from the ID. So now it's showing more. Okay. So how relation? How? Er, and if I do this, if I change this, right? That will come again. Bam! Because I re, I redo the auto entry. I force the auto entry. I trigger the auto entry. Bam. You know, it, it comes. It comes again. So now, just to finish this, the value list, you know, this one. How I get the value list to follow that relationship? Remember, 
I have a I have a relationship the TO five T. So you said go to the TO five T. So it's better if I'm showing this here. Go there. Show me the value. Right. Yeah. Of the TO five T. Only the one that this relationship allows me to see. Only the one, when you start from here, show me the one throughout the relationship to pilots. This is how you need to read the value list, the relate conditional related value list. Is how you, is that that way you need to see it. Go to the T O five T where where the value is living. And then you tell, yes, but I don't want all of them. I want only the one that the relationship throughout pilot can show. So this is how it looks. You go to the T of 5 T, grab the value on that table, and then instead of saying include all values, no, no. Only the one related value starting from pilots. Starting from pilots. So that means he says, so again, I'm showing you this to make sure that everybody understand. Go there, grab values, but only the one starting from pilots. So the relationship is this. The relationship is whatever inside this field, ignore all what is inside this. No, don't ignore that. This is what he's doing. So if we don't have any question, we can, um, you know. Man the plane, as it were? Yes. Yes, yeah. Uh... Dock the ship. Yeah. <laughs> Dock the ship. Or uh... land the balloon, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that would be good too. Uh, in this case, I think landing the balloon is more appropriate. I think we're good, so I will be doing that. All right, thank you, everyone, for coming, Nick. We will see you Monday next week. Monday, yeah, Monday. Yeah. Do we want to okay. do another yeah. uh, file distribution? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I will. I will send. I will clean up, and I will send to Marge. Yes, Great. please do. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.